thanks for joining me on another KL Tech Videos video. Uh, today is a quick video on how to install Image on Casa OS on an alternate drive to the boot drive. So this is different to the boot drive. The um, reason for this video today is simply because I was on Reddit uh, browsing through a lot of my uh, subreddits that I like to enjoy and read. I come across this one um, from a user which obviously I'll obscure just for their own privacy. Um, and it was basically, can't get image to use my second drive, so I just thought, oh, maybe that's a good idea for a video. Let's pop that on there. I've not done much with Casa OS uh, video-wise um, at this time. So yeah, image obviously, well, I say obviously, but for, for everyone that doesn't know, is the alternative to Google Photos. It's the self-hosted version of setting up your own photo and video backup server. It has a mobile app you can uh, conjure up with this uh, and marry up uh, if using a reverse proxy things like that i do have a video linked in the description below for how to install this on windows and it even shows you how to like um, get the app working with it and things like that um, i won't show how the app the mobile app works in this particular video but it is there if you want to go and look at that uh, for yourself this was specifically at just setting image up uh, and getting it to work with a, a secondary drive so with that out of the way let's get into today's video drive to do this and it's a USB drive that I've connected up to the system which is a four terabyte drive um, instead of my 500 gigabyte uh, boot drive. The principles that we're about to employ here are pretty much the same for any drive that you want to set up. It's just crucial that we set up the correct mount points um, and then we can install image onto it. So let's jump into it. Now all I've done here is literally just plug in my um, SSD um, into the USB port. It's a SanDisk Extreme and immediately it shows up here. If we click on the little um, cog here on storage, you'll see at the bottom four terabytes. I can format or remove it. Don't want to format it, it you know, it's just want to leave it the way it is. Um, and we'll get into that. So all I'm going to do here is go up to the terminal, which is the third button from across from the top. This is not the CASA OS username and password unless you've set it up that way. This should be the um, underlying operating system. In my case, that's Ubuntu. For me, that's KL Tech. Uh, and the following password. And if I just type in clear, well, I'll clear the terminal there. So it's fine. So we're going to run a command uh, called lsblk, which shows us all the drives attached. Um, if you don't have that, all you've got to do here is just um, paste that in, uh, which essentially is without these little bits on the end here and the beginning, sudo apt hyphen get install uh, util hyphen linux. Uh, and I've already got it installed, so it does need to reinstall that. And then we can type in the command, um, if we do clear first, lsblk. And that shows us everything attached. If we look uh, down the sizes here, we're looking for around about a four terabyte drive, in which case that'll be here. And we'll see it's part of the SDA block, the SDA device, which is the hard drive. SDA1 is what we're going to be looking for because that's underneath there. SDA is the whole drive. And these are the individual partitions. SDA1, it's currently mounted automatically to part um, and you know, media and all this crap. By you, and, we, and I don't really want that. Um, so what I'm going to do is gonna, I'm going to run sudo umount for unmount. Don't forget the u there. Um, forward slash dev forward slash sda1 uh, and if I do lsblk uh, we'll see that it's no longer mounted as it was uh, and that's because I want to mount it something more easier so that when we're installing image uh, it'll recognize that there's two ways of doing that we can literally just go sudo mount dev sda1 and then the directory you want to mount that to and hit enter and it'll and it'll it'll mount that uh, and what we also want to do by the way is create a directory where uh, these things are going to mount to so it's all good and well saying oh, you want to mount it here you want to mount it there you need to actually create that directory so uh, in my case that's going to be mk for make dir for directory so make directory forward slash mount forward slash sandisk and that's just my choosing you can name it whatever the hell you want um now it's going to say i've already got it because i have but i just wanted to show you that's the command to use to get that in there can't create it because it already exists, and that's where we're going to mount this drive. So if we go down to the command, uh, again, sudo nano etcfs tab. Finally, we can do device sda1, make sure that's correct. 
that's the device, uh, the physical device on the system. We want to mount that to mount SanDisk forward slash NTFS. You might have to put XEXT4 if you're using Linux system. Whatever your device came under, we're then going to put in defaults. Make sure the spelling's correct on this, and then zero and two. That should be fine for what we're going to do. Control O on the keyboard to write the file out. Control X to get out of it. Now that's basically going to permanently. Um, mount that every time the system reboots. But we also want to run systemctl daemon hyphen reload. And I'm going to copy that. After we've edited that file, we want to run that. That kind of reloads the FS tab file in the system. Now, if we close this, um, what we could also do at this point um, is mount that device as well. So instead of restarting the system, we could also do a sudo mount dev sda1 space mount sandisk. And that mounts that hard drive into the system. Uh, if we come out of here, you'll see that it's now mounted correctly. And at this point then, we can move on to our uh, file system. So if we click on files here, uh, we'll see a sandisk at the bottom there we'll see that obviously the root address is going to be mount sandisk so that's great now we can go into the app store find image don't click on install straight away click on the actual file itself the option hover over the arrow custom install and then obviously this is going to be the postgres the database we don't need to make these changes here unless you really want to you'll have to copy these across the file you should make a really powerful um strong rather password and username for these things but just for the um, purposes of this demonstration we're going to leave as is if we go over to image server by the way and then scroll down you'll see container and then this directory here user source app upload that is inside the container uh, anything on the right hand side of colons or the right hand side of image in this case is inside the container and the left is the host. By default, this is going to data gallery image. We don't want that. We want it to go to our SanDisk and we know that that is located at mount SanDisk. And we also want to create another folder in here, which is image. So we know where everything is on that. And then all we've really got to do at this point is just click install after we've made that change. It'll now run the installation procedure. I know some people say this can get stuck at 42%, so we'll give it a few minutes. You can see when it's actually working, because down here at the left-hand side, you'll see the network activity spike every now and then. And this is where it stopped for me in the past. And many other users, apparently. As you can see, the um, activity is actually pretty much dropped there on the left-hand side. So what we're going to do here at this point is we're going to click Continue in Background. And effectively, it's probably already done. Now, two things are going to happen here. When you click image, it'll either open to the default setup page, despite saying it's still installing, or you might get not found or a 404 error or something like that here. If you get anything other than this page, it's likely you've got the firewall installed, possibly the Ubuntu default, because I'm running Ubuntu server under this. If we go back to terminal and logs, and just log in with the Ubuntu operating system, username and password. Uh, and if I do sudo uh, uncomplicated firewall status numbered, I don't have 2283 open, but it is still working, and that's because Docker punches through the IP routing table, which is kind of the underlying system behind um, the firewall in some, in some respects. So if you don't get that in here, it might be worth adding 2283 uh, to the firewall, and you can do that by going sudo allow uh, sorry, sudo uncomplicated firewall allow and then the port number that image is on which is 2283 and then run that command and it'll add those rules for you. Again, we didn't need to do that because Docker's already punched it through but if you weren't getting anywhere at this point you could certainly try that out. Now, we're going to get getting started and I'm going to just chuck in some random details. So there we go. So we can just go ahead now and click theme. We're going to go with dark, privacy. Um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. We'll keep all that there. Uh, enable storage template engine. Yes, we're going to do that. And then we're just going to go down to the bottom and click done. 
And then we'll, this is effectively us done. Image is up and running and installed, right? As you can see, we now have a four terabytes of drive space because it's using that extra drive. And to really home, ring that home, uh, I'm going to upload a random picture and I'm going to refresh the page. And there's the random picture of myself. So that's there. Uh, and if we go back to Casa OS, uh, and with the terminal open here, we can actually verify that it's gone onto that drive. So if I do change directory, forward slash um, mount, forward slash sandisk, do ls, we can see uh, image is there, the third one across, so change directory image, ls, uh, we've got library, change directory library, ls, is admin, there's the profile we've just created, so change directory admin, ls, change directory 2024, ls, oh, I don't know why I keep doing that, 2024, ls, and then it wants a date, that's the date of that image, when it was taken, just the directory of that image, uh, ls, and there's the image, and as you can see that is on the directory path, mount, sand disk, image, library, admin, date it was taken, and we're using an alternate drive. Now, if you just wanted to use the original drive, you don't even need to go through all that hassle. You can literally just go ahead. But this is for people that are looking for that alternate drive. Um, maybe it's bigger space, uh, like this. the boot drive in this case is 500 uh, gigs. The SSD is 4 terabytes. So, simple as that, really. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, I do have a how to install image on Windows with Docker. If you're interested in that, I'll put the link in the description below. But this was supposed to be a real quick um, guide for image and how to... Mount a drive, a secondary drive, uh, make sure your mount points are correct. If this isn't working for you, then you are definitely not mounting this correctly, and you need to go back and double-check everything. But it is as simple as that. So make sure you're putting it in the correct place in the image um, setup on Casa OS as well. And as you can see, it still says uh, installing 42%, but if we refresh this page, it'll probably just work itself out. Yeah, there you go. Settings image server that's where it is that's where it's all is we just changed one line right in there again you can change all these make sure the if you're going to change these type of things make sure you marry them up across the different um areas for database and passwords um but apart from that it's just image server that you want to change that on and obviously if you want to change the port number go ahead but simple as that thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one